Hello, Zero K fans. This is Shadow 363 once again with another match between Sackdoth and Google Frog, and this time on Icy Shell, thankfully, on a much more reasonable map than Fields of Isis, because I really don't like that map. I'm not sure why I even opted to choose it. I, like I said, I wanted to see what happened because it seemed like it was two matches played in a row. I thought maybe it was a first to two. Why is Sackdoth credited with the win? The hell? That's supposed to be Google Frog's win. <sighs> Whatever. Screw it, let's reset the wins. This, isn't a, this is not a tournament. I don't really care. Google Frog won last game, but this isn't a tournament, so who cares? Let's just go. So Icy Shell, this is a map that has been played decently reason, decently enough recently. Recently enough, whatever. It's been played recently enough that I don't feel too much need to go over too much. The plus five mechs in the center is a huge deal and can be played around, though neither player, because they're starting... Players can't start fully north or fully south, anywhere in the north or south side. And both players opting to the opposite corner positions. Neither player going for center. Center is a tricky position, but you can get the center mechs really easily. And if you can hold that, it's very powerful. But both players are kind of going the hard way to the center mechs. They want to get the side mechs sooner. Go for those, not bother with the center one too quickly. Though they're both going... Actually, no, Sackthoth is going for light vehicles. Google Frog going for shield bots, so Google Frog will have an easier time because vehicles cannot path in here. They cannot drive into the middle crater. The hill is just a little bit too high. There's no way for them to get in there. While on the other hand, bots, of course, can path in there. It's not that steep. At this point, Google Frog just doing their scouting. Sactoth has not actually... What? Why is there a dart hanging out in here? What the heck? Sactoth, where is your scout? I guess they're waiting for the Scorcher first, but... I'm really surprised they haven't scouted yet. No, they're going for an early assault for... They're going for an early raid. They're not even scouting, they're just guessing. What? Did I miss something? No, there are no corpses for the darts, so yeah, that's... They're going for an early raid for some reason. I'm not sure what they're waiting for. But anyways, they're moving forward, setting up their commander. No, no upgrades yet from neither player. Nope, neither player is upgrading. But Google Frog being much more aggressive. Just these bandits. I mean, they're going straight for the center, too. They have that... They could take it whenever they like, really. Zaktoth is clearly not being very aggressive. They're looking like they might want to just do one big push. Okay, now they're finally attacking two minutes into the game. That's surprisingly late. I'm not sure what they were thinking. At this point, Google Frog is going to have the defenses set up. They're going to make it harder to scout. Because, I mean, Zaktoth isn't going to deal a huge amount of damage. The only reason I could see Zaktoth doing this is waiting until Google Frog gets the peripheral expansions and then killing them. I mean, that kind of makes sense. But... You can still send the dart early, just to see what's going on, just to see where your opponent is set up, and just to see kind of, kind of get an idea of what they're building at first. But no, Sackdoth just guessed. I mean, they guessed right, but they still just guessed. I don't know, I just would like to see a lot more scouting in this game, that's the thing. It's just, oftentimes I see players scout a little bit at the beginning of the game, and then never really scout again. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But at this point, Sackdoth, I mean, obviously it's easy to block out scouting. Or relatively easy to block out scouting until air switch happens, so there is that matter. But at the same time, at this point right now, Sackdoth can go around this side. They can go up here, they can send a dart or two just to see, oh hey, there's, it's open. They're going with Scorchers too, they're right to go this way. They don't have, they don't have radar here. Nope, no radar. They're just going in and hoping for the best. And they will not find it because they're being too slow on that one extremely down to very clutch decisions, which Sackdoth forced to retreat because they weren't fast enough. And I think, okay, we're really saying that scouting is super risky. I think people undervalue the value of information. Like, yeah, if you're sending three or four glaives, then yeah, that's a throw. If that's donation. But if you're sending, like, one? Or using a gremlin in the case of Clickybot Factory? I mean, okay, it's a bit more risky, but you can get a lot more information if you do it right. But yeah, glaives? One glaive? I mean, you're kind of checking around to see where they're weak, but still. You can get a lot of information, and that's very valuable. And yeah, radar is useful. They're pointing out radar is greater than scouting. Yes, radar is good, but radar doesn't give you specific information about what's there, and it also, it's kind of hard to build up at front. Okay, so Gremlin's a bad idea, but still. Moving in with, score with scouts, or, I don't know, it just bugs me. Like, everyone's just guessing. Like, 
so often I see people going for risky play because they can get away with it because their opponent isn't going to scout it out, isn't going to see it, isn't going to be able to see what's going on and oh hey, by the way, I'm building a fusion plant when I only have plus 20 metal or I'm going for a fact switch and not building a whole lot from my main factory or I'm naked expanding all the way over here all the way over here it's like Google Frog is just about naked expanding not quite naked but pretty close to it Dactot's forces could get rid of that expansion if they wanted to I mean, Google Frog would be aware if it happened, but Saktoth has no idea. I mean, Saktoth doesn't even have the radar to be aware of that. That's sort of the problem. Especially since they have darts. So, yeah, pointing out. You can, like, unless you're scout spiders or light vehicles, it's expensive to scout. Well, light vehicles. Scouting's possible. Okay, fair, fair enough. Fax, which is going to be hard. Unless it's fax, like, not in the main base. Oftentimes, I've seen players will... Oh, well, maybe not oftentimes, but not uncommonly, players will build factories outside of their main base. They'll build secondary or tertiary factories outside of their main base. And when that happens, it's important to know where it's happening. Like, even if you do see, oh, hey, there's a lot of defenders over here, that probably means that there is an expansion. Or rather, not an expansion. That probably means that there is a factory being built there. Anyway, that's just... Small complaint, and as the slashers kill each other, because apparently this slasher over here slept with the other slasher's spouse. So, decided to frag it in the battlefield when no one would notice. Can't say I totally agree with that behavior, but I do think it's understandable. The Saktoth, now finally able to build that southern economy. They haven't actually gotten that far behind, all things considered. And it looks like they did scout out a little bit. Yep, the center of the dart. Okay, they did scout out. That's good. After my big rant about scouting, it would be bad form of me to not point out when scouting actually does happen. And it did! But it could be happening far more often. I don't know, I don't think Sackdoth's multitasking, I think Sackdoth mentioned before that multitasking isn't great. And, I mean, I noticed that with a lot of players that some players do multitasking decently well, I think. Google Frog has always seemed pretty good at it. But yeah, it doesn't seem like it's one of those things that's really valued in 0k. It's kind of one of those StarCrafty things, I guess. People don't really value it as much. Worth pointing out, though. I mean, it's always good to have that. Just to have that little extra bit of, of potential. So you're attacking when it's best to do so. Or you're harassing, or kind of harassing at all times. You're scouting around at all times, knowing exactly what your opponent's up to. Especially when you have darts, you just can. And especially if you can set up counterattacks so that when your opponent attacks and you counterattack, like they're now getting distracted and they have they have to pay attention to two places. And Orphelius is right, this game is getting casted. Well called, Orphelius. And this is a good scout. This is actually yeah, they see the defender. But they don't Well, okay, it's not like it's gonna find too much information. Sactoth, however, does have a decent idea of what Google Frog is up to. They have been using the darts decently well. They know kind of where Google Frog is, where they aren't. They haven't been expanding a huge amount, though. They've been really timid. I mean, after that first set of bandits that was just spread across the entire map, they're understandably timid. I can really get why that would be the case. But they still gotta be... I'm a little worried. This looks like... I mean, this entire game, they've been setting up basically larger armies to burst. Which, granted, against Shieldbot Factory actually does make sense, because the Shieldbots typically go for Death Balls. So yeah, that's understandable. I'm a bit surprised that we don't see levelers, though, being that levelers are kind of the counter. We do see... Oh, impalers? Wow. Wants to really make sure that that plus five mechs isn't taken, but yeah, I've not seen impalers in a long time. Wolverine's plenty, but impalers? Holy crap, that's that's new. Well, not new, but people don't use them. We may find out why, or we may find out that they're actually far better than they're valued. But... That's going to take a little while, like 15 seconds before that's done. And nice harassment, I should point out, over here. Convict digging itself into a hole before basically losing all of the metal extractors, and now Sactoth is slightly ahead economically. I mean, if they can take this area out, if they can take out these bandits and secure the southeast, they're going to be way ahead. But it's still not going to be a great position. They're not in a great position to come back. There are no levelers. The Impaler is up. But seriously, the lack of levelers, the shields can't be bypassed. 
So slow damage here, which should help a lot, but still... Yeah, Rapiers... I see the choice. I can kind of understand it. I'm not sure I totally agree with that switch right now, because... On the one hand, it is Shieldbot, so they're going to have a harder time dealing with it quickly. But on the other hand, it's... Compare... Oh, okay, I guess the Rogues, I can see it. I guess the Bandits, I can see it. And as a Harassment Force, I can definitely see it. So if they're sending that Harassment Force while... I guess these Scorchers go the other... Yeah, the Scorchers don't really have anywhere they can easily go to deal with this. Having that center be inaccessible to vehicles is a bit of a problem, and this is where the Impaler is coming in. The Impaler is sort of coming in. Not sure how much is coming in. And Sackdoth is going to be raiding a little bit... Okay, get rid of that. That... Okay, that Rapier's going to die. The next Rapier should be able to deal a bit of damage. And that load time, that reload time... And, of course, the Vandals coming up. But this is what I mean. Shield bots, the Vandals are tough, but they aren't especially strong. They take a lot of hits to kill things. They take a lot of hits to die themselves, but it does mean that when you're going for just an emergency reaction air defense force, shield bots have one of the worst options. Once they get built up, it's really hard to deal with. And, of course, the Razors. But, yeah, once they get built up, the Vandals are very difficult to deal with. But as they're building up, it's not much of a threat. However, with five Vandals, that should be a threat. Well, okay, the two Razors are the biggest threat. This is kind of why I didn't... Ra I said it was not the best idea to go for the gunships. I was playing against Google Froggy last night, and... Yeah, he outright read gunships from me. And just built... Pre-built the Razors. That was... Google Frog expects to have air come at him. Alright, come at them. Like, that's what they expect. And that Impaler... Has it done anything? It has no rank, so I'm assuming it hasn't done much. And at the same time, just Thug Law Ball. Thug Rogue Ball, not even much Outlaw, just Thug Rogue. Tearing this whole thing to shreds. Google Frog having regained their economic lead, and did Sackdoth have... Yeah, okay, Sackdoth does have the production, but they don't have... They don't have much energy, do they? No, they don't. 24 to 22. It's a little problematic. So at this point, Google Frog is... Oh, their commander has been upgraded. Riot, Riot Cannon Commander, Sackdoth, into Rocket Launcher. And yeah, the Impaler isn't doing much good. Unsurprisingly, because no one builds it, and yeah, it's just not hitting things frequently enough. There just aren't enough of them, that's the problem. This Dominatrix is about to die. That Dominatrix went too far forward. Why is the Dominatrix not dead? The Scorchers basically saved it. That was really surprising. But I still want to know where the levelers are. I asked this last time I watched a Scorcher... Sorry, a Light Vehicle versus Shieldbot Factory matchup. In Light Vehicle versus Shieldbots, levelers are huge. I'm not sure they're quite king, but they're pretty big. They are a big deal. And no, the Dominatrix is not dead, surprisingly enough. The Scorchers are all dead. And the Dominatrix-controlled units are... both dead? Not quite. Now they're both dead. Zaktoth's very desperately trying to hold on with the Dominatrix, but once again, we see Dominatrix... I mean, that was, I think, Desert Cliffs? That was the Shieldbot versus Light Vehicle that no one that wasn't leveler. And it was just Dominatrix, and then the Dominatrix won, because it ended up causing the units to kill, every, uh, kill themselves, and the army was massively destroyed. So I guess the Dominatrix isn't a terrible idea, but it's really risky. It's also more expensive than the level to buy, about half. Yeah, it's twice the... Or not quite twice the cost. One and a half times the cost of the leveler. No. No, no, more than that. It's almost double. It's 60 metal shy of double. And it doesn't kill anything, it just sort of forces the opponent's units to kill each other. Not, not valueless, just not as flexible as a leveler. Like, it doesn't quite just kill things. It depends a lot on your opponent's units, and it depends a lot on your opponent not outranging it and just killing it before it does any damage. Like, five dummies, that's going to be a problem, but then bandits could come in, or dirtbags could come in. I'm actually a bit surprised Google Frog's not going for that. They are going for bandits, so we do see bandits coming in, which is basically the counter. Dirtbags would also be acceptable, though I think dirtbags are... No, they're less expensive. Dirtbags are 60, I think. Yeah, no, 30, sorry. They're half what I thought. Dirtbags are 30. Dirtbags are definitely the right option. Unfortunately, that's not what's gone for, but the Dominatrix army is still going down. And Icy Shell being Icy Shell, it's rapidly becoming vehicle impathable. This whole area here is just getting dotted with craters, and the vehicles cannot deal with this. So Zaktoth can't easily defend it. That's what happens on this map. This map is a very, very soft map. Is that, that EMP... 
the Racketeer Disarm Missile, I think, just caused a small dent in the ground. That's how soft this map is. Every single explosion pretty much causes a dent in the ground. And causes a bit of terraforming. Yep, right there. Just happened. Oops. And now down goes the gunship, and soon down will go the vehicle plant. Ravager's coming out, which is not a bad idea if Google Rock was going for felons, which they're not. They're going pure bandit. It's basically directly counter. So I'm not sure what the exact motivation here is, but yeah, it's pretty much directly countered. And Google Frog, they, well, that's nice to actually dominatrix on the Lotus, but that's still not enough. So I think this is basically game. So if it, they were playing first to two, it looks like Google Frog did go 2-0 against Saktoth. That's exactly what happened if they were playing first to two. Google Frog went 2-0. That was game, and that is going to be also it for me tonight. So thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed that, and although admittedly if you did enjoy the Fields of Isis game or the Green Comet game, I cannot say I blame you. Those aren't the best maps for 0k. But the first and last games I hope you enjoyed at the very least, because those maps were considerably more appropriate and those games were considerably more exciting, or at least they showed some interesting unit choices. So with that said, I will be going. Thank you once again for watching and have a good night everybody.